Did you know that railroad tracks can actually bend like noodles? Yet in an instant, they become tougher than rock. Every year, over 15 million tons of steel are used to build these tracks. But how do we transform raw iron ore into rails that can withstand the weight of thousands of tons? Stick around to discover how cutting-edge technology and precision engineering are revolutionizing infrastructure. The process of manufacturing railroad tracks is a fascinating blend of advanced technology and heavy machinery. But it all begins with iron ore. This ore is mined either in open pits or underground. Open pit mining is used when deposits are near the surface, employing massive excavators and drilling machines. For deeper ore deposits, underground mines are excavated. Once the ore is extracted, it is crushed and refined through several stages to separate the iron and remove impurities. The enrichment process involves crushing, grinding, and either magnetic or flotation separation, which produces a concentrate with a high iron content. To create a strong and flexible alloy, carbon is added to the iron ore. This carbon typically comes from coking coal, which undergoes high temperature processing. Other elements like chromium, manganese, nickel, or molybdenum are also added to the steel to enhance its strength and other critical properties. Every year, more than 15 million tons of steel are used worldwide for railway tracks. This represents a significant portion of global steel production, and demand continues to grow due to infrastructure expansion and the need to replace worn-out tracks. After extraction and initial processing, the raw materials are transported to steel mills. Rail and maritime transport are commonly used, especially for long distances, since ore is often mined in remote areas. Thus, steel production for rails involves combining various materials sourced from different parts of the world, with the extraction and processing stages relying on complex machinery and a multi-step refining process. The production of railway tracks begins in the steelmaking facility, where iron ore and other components are melted in specialized electric or blast furnaces to create molten steel. Carbon and alloying elements are then added to the steel to enhance its strength. Once the desired composition is achieved, the metal is maintained at a high temperature to ensure uniformity. The molten steel is poured into large molds, forming slabs, rectangular blocks of steel that will eventually be shaped into rails. After cooling, the slabs are transported to the rolling mill for further processing. A rolling mill is a massive machine that shapes steel slabs into the desired form and size for rails. The slabs pass through a series of rollers, which gradually reduce their thickness and form the railhead, web, and base. The rails are rolled at temperatures exceeding 1,832 degrees Fahrenheit, making the metal more pliable. To increase the hardness and wear resistance of the rails, a heat treatment process is applied. The rails pass through cooling chambers, where the temperature is gradually reduced, minimizing internal stress in the metal. Typically, one foot of rail weighs about 45 to 55 pounds, meaning a standard rail weighs approximately 3,858 pounds. A large steel mill can produce around 3,500 feet of rails per shift, roughly 10,000 feet per day. Once the rails are finished, they undergo thorough inspections for defects such as cracks, surface irregularities, or other damage. Specialized ultrasonic and X-ray techniques are used to ensure quality. After inspection, the rails are cut to standard lengths of approximately 1,000 inches, and their ends are machined for easier connection during installation. Once manufactured, the rails are transported to construction or repair sites. Trains specially designed for carrying long rails are typically used for this purpose. Freight cars secure the rails tightly to prevent any movement during transit. Laying railroad tracks is a complex process that requires the use of specialized machinery. First, the ballast, which serves as the foundation for the ties and rails, is leveled and compacted along the railway bed. This ballast is crucial for the stability of the tracks and for proper drainage. Ballast spreaders evenly distribute the crushed stone, creating a stable layer on which the ties and rails will be laid. Automatic tie laying machines then place wooden or concrete ties on the prepared ballast base 
ensuring they are spaced precisely. These machines are equipped with sensors to maintain an exact distance between the ties, which is essential for the stability of the future track. Railroad rails can last up to 30 years or more, depending on the volume of traffic and environmental conditions. However, on high traffic routes, such as those used for freight trains, rails may wear out more quickly and require replacement every 10 to 15 years. Next, the rail laying machines take over. And oh my goodness, what a mesmerizing sight it is. When we think of rails, we usually picture something as rigid as stone. Yet during the laying process, they seem to bend under the influence of the machines, almost like rubber bands. In reality, this is due to the immense forces acting on them. When rails are first rolled out, they're heated to extremely high temperatures to make the steel more malleable and easier to shape. During installation, rails are sometimes reheated to prevent future thermal expansion, which gives them that seemingly softer, more pliable appearance. Specialized machines carefully lift, align, and position these long sections of rail as though they're weightless and not the solid, unyielding steel we know them to be. It's all thanks to precise manipulation and the illusion of flexibility, which cleverly conceals the incredible strength of the steel. This is one of those fascinating railway magic tricks, where raw power and advanced technology combine to create a spectacle that's as captivating as it is impressive. Workers then join the rails using specialized bolted or welded joints. Thermite welding or electric welding equipment is employed to create a seamless rail line, ensuring a smooth ride for trains. It's remarkable how much effort goes into making it possible for me to visit my favorite grandma, or for any office worker to commute to their job. To secure the rails to the ties, special fasteners are used to clamp them firmly in place. This ensures stability and prevents the rails from shifting under the weight of passing trains. Rails have the ability to freely expand and contract by a few millimeters for every 10 yards, depending on the temperature. As a result, when laying tracks, engineers take average annual temperatures into account. In some cases, the rails are even heated to a specific temperature during installation to minimize the effects of thermal expansion. Automatic fastening machines quickly install bolts or clips to connect the rails to the ties, significantly speeding up the process. Once the rails and ties are in place, specialized machines align the track by lifting or lowering the ties and adjusting the ballast beneath them. Thanks to laser sensors and computer control, these machines ensure precise track alignment, which is critical for safety. Other machines tamp the ballast, crushed stone, around the ties, providing a solid foundation. This reduces the risk of track shifting and enhances its resistance to vibrations. These machines are equipped with special tamping arms that dig deep into the ballast and compact it firmly around the ties. Rails are often made using a significant percentage of recycled steel, as steel retains its properties well during reuse. This helps reduce the need for new ore extraction and lowers the carbon footprint, contributing to a more sustainable production process. Imagine if every glass bottle you throw away could become the key to saving the planet and even earn you some extra cash. Did you know that over 130 million tons of glass are recycled worldwide each year? I recently visited one of the largest recycling plants to uncover the fascinating secrets of how ordinary glass takes an incredible journey from the trash bin to new possibilities, transforming our lives along the way. So, how does a glass item get a new life? The recycling process for bottles begins with collecting used glass. In many cities and countries, a system of separate waste collection is in place, which greatly helps with efficient recycling. Special containers for glass collection are set up in various locations, separated from those for plastic, paper, and organic waste. This prevents glass from mixing with other materials, making the recycling process smoother. In some countries or companies, Glass collection points have been established, where people can return used bottles and receive a reward in exchange. This encourages the public to participate in gathering and returning glass bottles for recycling. In many former Soviet Union countries, the collection of glass is often carried out by vulnerable and marginalized groups. However, 
In European Union countries, it is a routine practice for everyone to return used containers, often receiving something like a discount on their grocery bill in return. Once collected, the glass is sent to recycling plants, where the main processing begins. Once the glass bottles are collected from containers or drop-off points, they are transported to specialized sorting centers for further processing. Waste collection trucks periodically pick up the glass from these containers and deliver it either to sorting centers or directly to recycling plants. This is typically done on a large scale to make transportation more efficient. At the plants or sorting stations, the trucks unload the glass bottles into large containers, where they begin the preparation process for sorting and recycling. Once the bottles arrive at the facility, the next step begins, sorting the glass by type and color. This step is crucial to optimizing the recycling process. Sorting glass by color is extremely important because different glass colors are used for different products and mixing them can reduce the quality of new items. The bottles are sorted automatically using special optical scanners that detect the glass color and sort it into clear, green and brown categories. This is crucial since each type of glass requires separate recycling processes. These sorting machines are equipped with sensors that identify the color of the glass using light sensors. Whole bottles or glass fragments move along a conveyor belt, where machines illuminate them with a lamp or laser. The light reflected from the glass is analyzed by the sensors. The system identifies the glass color based on the signal received and sends this information to a controller. After identifying the color, each glass piece is directed to the appropriate section, either through a stream of air or mechanically removed from the conveyor. The glass is then separated into different streams, which significantly simplifies the next steps of melting and reuse in new products. Once sorted by color, the glass passes through magnets and air streams to remove metal elements like bottle caps, as well as other impurities such as paper labels or plastic residues. Powerful magnets are placed along the conveyor belt to capture all metallic impurities, including steel caps, while electromagnetic separators are used to remove aluminum caps and foil pieces. Pneumatic systems are used to blow away plastic and label remnants from the conveyor, using strong air currents to clear away any materials that are not needed for further recycling. Of course, the glass also undergoes a wet cleaning process in special washing systems, as many of these bottles will be reused to make containers for food products. Just think about it. We discard bottles without a second thought, not realizing how much effort goes into recycling them. Compared to other materials, Glass does not wear out or degrade with use, making it an incredibly sustainable material for continuous recycling. After the sorting process, the glass is crushed into what's called cullet, which serves as the raw material for making new glass products. Specialized machines are used to break down glass bottles into small pieces, making further processing easier. These crushers come in various types, but most work using a mill with two parts, one stationary and one movable, where the glass is ground down as the two parts rub against each other. Crushers can include jaw, cone, roll, hammer, and gyratory types. The glass is fed into the crushing machine via a hopper or conveyor belt, and inside, mechanical elements reduce it to the desired size. Some crushers go through multiple stages of crushing to ensure uniform particle size. At this point, any remaining impurities that were not removed during sorting can be further filtered out. After crushing, the cullet is sifted to remove pieces that are either too large or too small. This is done to ensure a uniform mixture of cullet that's ready for melting. From this finely crushed cullet, new bottles and jars are most often produced. It can be a bit unsettling to think that something made from waste ends up as new tableware, right? But the powerful processing and extremely high temperatures used in recycling leave no chance for the glass to carry any trace of its former life into the finished product. After being crushed, the cullet undergoes further cleaning to remove any remaining contaminants and is treated before heading to the melting furnaces, starting with magnetic separation. This process eliminates any leftover metals that may have passed through the sorting phase. It's crucial because even small traces of metal can disrupt the glass melting process. 
Next, specialized technologies are used to remove any organic residues, such as paper labels, adhesives, or other materials, ensuring that the cullet is completely clean before melting begins. The glass fragments are then sent to vibrating sieve machines, where they pass through screens of various sizes to separate the cullet into different grades based on particle size. Different grain sizes are used for different glass products. At this stage, the entire process is automated, with machines equipped with monitoring and control systems. The use of specialized machinery also reduces the risk of injury for workers handling glass bottles, as the entire process takes place in a controlled and safe environment. After being cleaned, cullet is sent to recycling plants, where it is transformed into new molten glass. At the plant, the cullet is loaded into special furnaces, where it melts at temperatures ranging from 2,800 to 3,000 degrees Fahrenheit. The glass becomes liquid and ready to be shaped into new products. Adding cullet to the melting process reduces energy consumption, as recycled glass melts at a lower temperature than raw materials. Occasionally, new raw materials such as sand, soda ash, and limestone are added to the melting process to maintain the chemical composition and quality of the glass. This helps ensure the strength and clarity of the new products. Once the glass is transformed into a molten state, it is used to produce new glass items. The liquid glass is poured into molds to create various products such as new glass bottles, jars, vases, or other containers. Lower quality recycled glass is often used as filler in concrete, which enhances its aesthetic appeal, increases strength, and improves thermal insulation. In large factories, this process is fully automated and may involve high precision molds to ensure the desired quality and thickness of the glass. After shaping, the glass products pass through specialized cooling systems where the temperature is gradually reduced this step is crucial to prevent cracking and ensure the mechanical strength of the finished products. After forming, the new glass products undergo rigorous quality control to ensure they meet safety and durability standards. Optical and mechanical tests are conducted for this purpose. Specialized systems inspect the products for defects such as air bubbles, cracks, or improper shapes. If a product does not meet the required standards, it is sent back for recycling. Additionally, the items are tested for mechanical strength, especially in the case of glass bottles, which must withstand pressure and other stresses during use. Once all stages are complete, the new glass products are packaged and transported to the market for further use. In large factories, the packaging process is also automated. Glass products are grouped and packed into cardboard boxes or placed on pallets for easy transportation. The finished goods are then shipped to warehouses or directly to customers, such as beverage, food, and other product manufacturers, where they will be used again, allowing the glass recycling cycle to start anew. This process is both economically and environmentally beneficial. Glass recycling plays a significant role in reducing greenhouse gas emissions and water pollutants. By using recycled glass material to produce jars and containers, we can minimize waste and lower our carbon footprint. Additionally, producing glass from raw materials requires extraction methods that negatively impact the environment, making recycling a much more sustainable choice. Glass recycling offers significant environmental benefits due to its energy efficiency. Using recycled glass, cullet, helps reduce energy consumption in the production of new products as melting cullet requires lower temperatures than melting raw materials. Researchers in this field have noted that energy use can be reduced by 3%. Recycling also decreases the amount of waste sent to landfills. Since glass does not naturally decompose and can remain in the environment for thousands of years, recycling it is crucial for environmental preservation. Additionally, glass recycling conserves natural resources. By recycling glass, we reduce the need for raw materials like sand, soda ash, and limestone, helping to preserve these resources for future generations.